Hello, Year 10. Welcome to today's lesson on Macbeth. We are looking at um, scenes, Act 5, Scenes 2, 3, and 4. So after you've completed your retrieval practice on the poem Exposure, um, you need to do the following things. So first of all, I'd like you to go ahead and listen to the scenes. They're really short, so I've put in the hyperlink um, to the YouTube video with the reading. If you go to 1 hour 51 minutes and 50 seconds in, that's where it starts, and then it ends just 8 minutes later, so it won't take you very long. While listening and following along to the scenes, if you would add these annotations into um, or onto your pages, please, and then make sure you upload a photo of those annotations to your assignment. I've even given you the page numbers that you need, so I've tried to make it as easy as possible for you. You're welcome. Um, now, task three, what you're doing is completing this chart. So you can see uh, the answers on the screen in front of you. So act five, scene two, the purpose of the scene is exposition, which just means an explanation of what is happening. The effect on the reader is that we learn a lot of information. We learn that Malcolm is making progress towards leading the men to Burnham. Remember, he was coming from England, and so it just kind of updates us um, on that. We also learn that the Thanes have turned against Macbeth and are joining forces with Malcolm and with Macduff. So it's just a short scene to kind of update the audience on, on what is happening. There are nine short scenes in Act 5. Act 5 has is the shortest act, I believe, but has the most scenes. And the reason is that the fast, short scenes increase the pace, and that heightens the tension. And finally, the purpose of Act 5, Scene 2 through Scene 9 um, is to highlight this battle between good and evil. So both, both forces, that is the force of good and the force of evil, is given equal weighting, and that's different to the rest of the play, whereas the rest of the play, although we have some mention of Macbeth as being good at the very beginning, um, up until now, we just have kind of this sense of evil that's being given a lot of um, screen time, if you will. So some of our motifs pop up in Act 5, Scene 2. So you're just copying in this information. Uh, we have the motif of hands, and you see the example quotation there. His secret murder sticking on his hands. Blood, wood to the bleeding and the grim alarm. And disease, meet we the medicine of the sickly wheel. So these three motifs are mentioned throughout the play, and I wanted to point out to you that they're in this scene. Okay, next task, which is task four, not task three, um, is to fill in this information. So we have Shakespeare characterizing Macbeth as very erratic. He swings from hopelessness to bravado in this scene in order to highlight that he is not fit to be king. So on the outside, he's very confident, but on the inside, we know that he is afraid and he is um, feeling hopeless. So he's characterized as confident through quotes like, I cannot taint with fear and what's the boy Malcolm? And the analysis, the repetition of fear uh, throughout the scene reveals that on the outside, Macbeth is confident. He says he doesn't have anything to fear. And then calling Malcolm a boy links back to this idea of masculinity. He's also characterized as hopeless. Um, in his soliloquy, so these are the thoughts that he's just expressing um, on stage without anyone else hearing. He says things like, I am sick at heart, and that links in again to the motif of disease. It highlights his true feelings, and he is in despair. And he's also characterized as cruel. So if you look at the treatment of how he treats his servant, he calls him thou lily livered boy. Um, it just reminds the audience of his tyrannical tendencies. That's right before he gives his soliloquy where he says he's afraid. So I think Shakespeare has him treating the servant this way so that the audience doesn't feel any sympathy for him um, from Macbeth. You may feel um, sympathy for the servant, of course. Okay, task five is a quick focus on act five, scene four. Um, so we see the difference between Malcolm and Macbeth. Shakespeare characterizes Malcolm as effective um, and as a level-headed leader, and that highlights the contrast between Malcolm and Macbeth. So Malcolm is characterized as showing clear direction and leadership. He says things like, let every soldier hew him down a bow. And so that's an imperative, but I've called it an indirect imperative. So instead of saying, you, 
hew down a tree, you know, he says, let every soldier. So it's quite indirect, um, which really contrasts the harsh imperatives uttered by Macbeth in previous scenes, such as when he tells the servant, go prick thy face. Uh, Malcolm's also characterized as being a very optimistic. He says, I hope the days are near at hand that chambers will be safe. So rather than focusing on the fact that in a few days time he will be king, he's very selfless and he emphasizes the fact that he wants to provide safety for all of his citizens. And then finally, I've put an optional challenge in here for you. Um, so how does Shakespeare present the characters of Mac Macbeth and Malcolm in these opening scenes? Write a what, how, why paragraph. All right, that's it. Hope you found that helpful. Stay safe.